Atami Zuyung Kyo. God chose Atami as the site for the prototype of paradise on earth, and has assigned the mission of constructing it to me. Called the Paradise of Glorious Skies, this place, a man made creation, joins nature's beauty in perfect balance. The Zuyung Kyo gardens in Atami evoke being in a paradise where myriad flowers smile and countless birds sing. Whenever I look at the scenery surrounding the prototype of paradise in Atami, I am always impressed and enchanted by the beauty and harmony embodied in its trees, foliage, and stately hillside. Atami is probably the most scenic place in Japan, blessed with many great features. Its beautiful view of neighboring mountains and ocean coastline, the mild climate, natural hot springs, and easy accessibility. From all this, shouldn't it be clear that the creation of the Earth was done with extremely long-term planning? Probably many millions of years ago, God designated Japan as a scenic park for the world, and in it prepared paradise-like places with an ideal climate, topography, and natural beauty. Waiting there until the time was right, they are, of course, Atami, Hakone, and Mount Fuji. In particular, God intended Atami to be the most ideal, perfect place. When the advancement of material civilization made the construction of paradise possible, I was born in accord with God's plan. Through a series of events, God guided me to live in Atami and begin the realization of his goal the construction of the prototype of Paradise on Earth. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this morning service of the Miroko Association headquarters. The teaching today, we heard that uh, in particular, God intended Atami to be the uh, most ideal, perfect place. When Meishu Sama first envisioned and acquired the land where is now Atami Sacred Grounds. It had to build a road going up to the mountain and through its construction there were offers by city officials in Atami that wanted to help. So that would uh, mean to be politically engaged with the city officials, Bishu Sama uh, decided not to accept any kind of help because uh, he had the vision and he wanted to materialize, to accomplish every step that he had in his mind according to God's direction. So he didn't want to compromise in that sense. So that was Bishu Sama's strength. No, I'm going to built, we as the jewelry community with the ministers and members, we are going to make this possible. Atami sacred grounds have many impressive features. There is the hall of worship. The hall of worship for Japanese standards is a quite huge structure where you can comfortably sit 3,000 people. Bishusama designed the Crystal Hall. You have seen pictures of the Crystal Hall with the Azalea Hill. So the design itself impressed uh, many architects because Bishusama created the hall without pillars. So people would have the view of the Sagami Bay unobstructed. So that was a quite unique design and there is the MOA Museum of Art which was inaugurated in commemoration of Mish Sama's 100th birthday. It was inaugurated in 1982. It is called the Museum Overlooking the Sea. So it's a great feature because from the museum, inside the museum, you have this superb view of this Sagami Bay uh, in, on clear days, you see two islands in front 
of uh, Atami, Hatsushima Island, Oshima Island. Uh, like uh, Mishama described, it is its the coastline, the mountain view. It's called the Riviera of Japan. I, uh, as a minister, have been blessed to visit and take members on pilgrimage to other sacred grounds. What appear other sacred grounds from Brazil, Sarabudi sacred ground in Thailand, the other sacred grounds in Japan, Hakone and Kyoto. And I've been also to Rwanda, Africa, and to Kakwaku, the future sacred grounds for the African continent. But that time it was the place where I spent most time. My training was in Japan. Of nine months that I spent in training in Japan, at least seven months were in Atami. But my beginning was not as easy as I thought. When I arrived in Japan for the first time was uh, November of eight, 1987. And I was all excited uh, knowing, you know, the secret route Mishusama built. Uh, was the first time I was traveling outside of Brazil. But then the cultural shock that some setbacks started happening in my feelings. First was the weather. Uh, soon after November, I then entered December, so weather started getting colder. I was not used to that, to that kind of uh, weather, so I, I struggled a lot with the weather. And then was uh, food. Uh, before traveling to Japan, I was acquainted with what may be considered uh, gourmet uh, food that you may eat in Japanese restaurants. Uh, some more of you are familiar with uh, sushi and tempura and dishes like that. But uh, my experience was that we, we were eating uh, our meals as trainees in a cafeteria that was serving food for 200 people. So they uh, were offering simple, good, good fare, but was not the food that I, I used to. So I started having this difficulty of uh, really absorbing and, and being grateful for the food that I was, I was making my effort, but was sincerely, frankly speaking, was not easy for me. So two, three months passed and then this happened. Uh, we had a dormitory, and at that dormitory we received a, a visit of one a senior minister in Brazil that would stay with us for, for a week or so. Then he arrived late at night, restaurants were all closed, so we had a small fridge at our dorm, so he opened the fridge to see if he he could have something to eat, there was nothing there. So then he made a comment to us trainees, oh, you guys don't have anything for me to eat. And then we explained the situation to him. He said, look, uh, Reverend, uh, our allowance is quite small. As you may know, <laughs> we are trainees, so we can't really afford uh, to buy food for extra hours. We, we have our meals at the cafeteria and whatnot, and that's, we are satisfied with that, but uh, we just can't. Uh, oh, really? Uh, don't worry. I will make sure you have a weak provision of uh, essential things. Eggs, bread, uh, cheese, milk, coffee. And so he did. He arranged with his international department and on a weekly basis, you would have that. For me, then, was my quote-unquote salvation because uh, I was having difficulty eating the Japanese food and most especially breakfast. Breakfast for me was a nightmare. 
because uh, I was used to my idea of a breakfast. Someone coming from Brazil was having coffee, milk, bread, butter, at least that. So my then the breakfast uh, was normally very Japanese. It was a miso soup, rice, sometimes a raw egg to put on top of a rice, which uh, I I understand that uh, there are many veg and uh, some vegetables in, uh, and sometimes even fish. So for me to have that meal in, in the morning was the most difficult part. So when this reverend arranged this provision, bread, milk, cheese, I no longer was eating at the cafeteria. And then I, I went to the extreme, not just breakfast. I was not going for lunch, I was not going for dinner. Oh, today I'm going to make an omelet. Today I'm going to have a toast with the cheese. So that was my diet, which started influencing my personality. I st my mood uh, changed. I was very focused on studying Japanese. I was once considered one of the top students in my group. Then I, I changed my focus. I was no longer then studying Japanese as I should. I bought a teachings of Meishu Sama in English. I started to study the teachings in English a lot, but I neglected the Japanese study, which was part of my mission. I was there in training in Japan to master to learn Japanese as much as possible. So as I, my mood changed, I was no longer going to eat with others in the cafeteria, but eating by myself at my dormitory, uh, neglecting the Japanese studies. My Japanese teacher noticed that change in behavior. It was a serious change, so she reported my change to another senior minister that uh, visited us from Brazil, who came to talk to me in the ground, what's going on? I heard from your teacher that you are no longer doing well in your Japanese studies. You were once the top uh, student. What happened? Then I, I mentioned to him, well, I'm having this difficulty with the weather, but especially the food and especially breakfast has been so hard on me. So he listened to me and, and gave me the advice, which I was challenging for me to have a open, an open heart to listen to his guidance because uh, I never felt that really close to that uh, reverend. Uh, but he guided me, look, you're going to have uh, all the time in your life as a trainee or a, as a minister to learn English, uh, do one thing, enjoy your time here in Japan, which may be your only chance, maybe your last time, you don't know if you ever have a chance to return. And my suggestion is that tomorrow, that means it would be the following day, go have a, the Japanese breakfast at the cafeteria. I listened to him, but uh, in my mind I, I was saying to myself, really? Are you serious? What that can, uh, how come this uh, uh, eating the breakfast can change anything? But I accepted the guidance and uh, told him, okay, Reverend, I will, I will do as you are suggesting. So I did uh, uh, with the, the spirit, well, I will try just to tell him that that wouldn't work. But for my surprise, which was one, 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 something very mysterious, almost a miracle that happened to me, when I went to the cafeteria to have the very same breakfast I was running away from, rice, miso soup, vegetables, uh, fish, it was very delicious, very delicious. I couldn't believe it. I thought that was either magic or maybe 
he told the cooks or somebody to change the, uh, maybe they brought rice from the organic rice from the nature farming. How come I was running away from something that is so delicious? So from that day on, everything that was bothering me in Japan somehow changed. We were entering the month of March, the weather started getting warmer. My own schedule of studies changed. I was sent a month of April to the Gifu prefecture, where the members received with so much warmth. I spent a wonderful one month visiting five different jewelry centers. So my whole perception of what was then Japan, Japanese culture, or even Japanese food, gradually changed until uh, the month of May came and I could meet the one that is my, my wife today. So if I wouldn't go for that change, I don't believe that uh, maybe I would have uh, the permission to meet the one that uh, is my, my wife. So that change then came from a small practice, but the point for me was that uh, uh, ministers in that case can be guided to, to suggest something and we will only really know the benefit if we put that into practice, which was my case. So all of that happened in Atami. Because of that, I, I love Atami. Also, that was the place where I had my wedding ceremony. So Mr. Sama created this sacred grounds for all the world to enjoy. We also heard in the teaching today, it is very accessible. You have a bullet train that uh, runs towards the uh, Tami city and is a five minutes ride from uh, a taxi from a car from the train station. So it is very beautiful, very accessible. I want to encourage you, even if you have visited uh, Tami once, to project, to have the prayer, the thought that you be there. Being a place so special, as Mish Sama described, so we should make an effort to, to honor what Mishu Sama created for the world and to be able to inspire others. As I was inspired, I want to inspire everyone that I meet. You should go to, to the sacred grounds. And Atami for me is a very special one. That's what I would like to share with you today. Wish you a very happy day. I hope to see you attending our upcoming services as well. Thank you very much.